Okay. And I think we are live. Okay. So hi everyone. It's our second ride in. Um, I will say I've been reading y'all's chat and y'all are talking about the weather. And like I saw someone say it's raining and I wish I had that rain. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Okay. But yeah, y'all say where you're from. We love seeing where everyone's coming from. You see them like a lot of different places today, which is great. Yeah. Um, if you haven't been to a virtual write-in before, uh, we are going to be here for like the next hour, um, essentially talking about writing and doing some writing prompts. Um, getting getting some words down. So, um, if you don't know me, my name is Catherine, and I am the I am now the communications director. Recently, <laughs> recent title change. So, communications director at NaNoWriMo. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, or they, them. Okay, <laughs> I'm Josie. <laughs> I'm the editorial and programs intern for this fall. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. And I'm from Texas. Um, here's my other, here's my good friend intern, friend turn, friend turn. Oh, no, I'm a friend turn. I've been upgraded. <laughs> yes, make me words. <laughs> Lena. Uh, hi, my name is Lena Rodriguez. I use she they pronouns. I am from Las Vegas, Nevada. I use no, wait, I am marketing and fundraising intern this fall. Um, and uh, this is also my second time hosting a virtual ride-in. So I'm having, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> yeah, I'm super, I'm super excited to be here with y'all too. There are um, so many first timers in the chat. Aw, yay. <laughs> That's exciting. Super exciting. Um, as people are like letting us know where you guys are from and all of that, um, uh, just a few things before we get started. Um, first of all, anyone who is participating in our nano prep donor drive, we raised over $15,000, which is amazing. Thank you all so much for supporting us and supporting all storytelling structures and everything. It, we appreciate it very, very much. Uh, uh, and um, additionally, um, as we keep going into NaNoWriMo season, um, all of our um, sponsors, for the most part, have some sort of free trial or some sort of deal going on right now, with one exception, and the one exception starts on Saturday, and it's Scrivener. We'll have a free trial starting on Saturday until some point in December, December 15th, I think, um, and then it will be available for half off, um, and uh, you can find all of your other products platforms if you uh, want to have options um, in our forums page. There we go. Um, additionally, uh, uh, all, um, if you were a donor or if you weren't a donor, you will still have access to getting a printable or regular uh, postcard from our Nano Prep Donor Drive. Josie and I will be hosting a postcard writing party so we can let people know why we will be hermits for the next month. Um, and it will be fun. We'll be able to chit chat. We'll be able to write something that is not our story for the, uh, right before we are stuck in our story for 30 days. Um, that will be happening on Tuesday, October 25th at 11.30 Pacific time. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we should have fun um, and get us ready. Um, if you want to prepare, if you are not a pantser like I am, um, you can get involved in our Nano Prep, um, uh, Nano Prep 101 stuff, which is available in your NaNoWriMo HQ. I think I've noted all of the things. That was a lot more things than there were last week. <laughs> I know it's, it's, November is like right around the corner somehow. Um, so we've got a ton of stuff going on. Um, I'm going to drop some links for y'all in the chat to our nano prep materials. If you're like, like Lena mentioned, if you're getting ready um, to, uh, I dropped a link to our sponsor offers. I'm going to drop a link to our events page where some of the events that you mentioned, um, they're all listed there and you can RSVP. Um, and we're, we're continually adding more uh, as more events come on the calendar as well. Um, and I'm also going to drop a link 
to, if you haven't yet announced your NaNoWriMo novel, um, if you haven't created your, uh, your project on the website yet, um, we'll start updating word counts on November 1st, but you can like make your novel and start planning for it and get excited about it. So I'll drop that link in the chat as well. My favorite pieces are, um, because I don't outline at all, I should, but I don't, um, but my favorite pieces end up being like the playlist and uh, the Pinterest board um, that everybody can do. So if you don't outline or if you outline and then throw it away the second you start writing, like I also do, um, then uh, you have other options of things to do and not just uh, plan for an outline, uh, depending on who you are, what you, how you organize your writing. Okay, so I think that's enough for introductions. Um, we can get started with our talks for today. The theme is a fun one. Um, we're going to be writing about like daily life, which is personally one of my favorite things to write about. Um, so I'll let Lena talk about the prompt some more. <laughs> Okay, our first prompt is to write a list of like mundane or domestic things your characters are or do in between the exciting events of the world, um, whether it's your world that you have, um, uh, you have already created or like you um, don't have any ideas yet, like decide what does Captain America do when it's free time. Uh, so you can pick, take inspiration from your own to-do list. You need to uh, do laundry, get groceries, or you can make it specific to your world. Like, do they need to mug out the unicorn stables? Um, if this prompt doesn't work for you, you can just write whatever you want. Um, and uh, yeah, have fun with it. I want to find out what domestic things happen in your fun world. So I'm especially fantasy. That make, that excites me. I want to know what happens. <laughs> um, we will have five minutes on the clock. I will get that started right now. And uh, yeah, we get going on this writing prompt. All right, let's start.
Okay, start wrapping up for the last 30 seconds. I wasn't expecting a lot from this and then I ended up get, uh, getting a whole bunch of things on my list. I'm surprised at myself. <laughs> Okay, come on back. <laughs> so what kind of like domestic things in your world or in between the exciting moments do you have going on? I saw a mention of like Captain America doesn't drink water <laughs> except he does drink beer. <laughs> hey, um, I got a little distracted by the chat because I saw some people talking when one person, um, uh, Fluff Moon is like, oh, this is gonna be hard because I have two main characters. And then Rachel said, yeah, I have five, which is incredible. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> like Heroes of Olympus style, like all the char characters having those different points of view. I, I couldn't write that. I don't know if I can keep one or two characters straight in my head. <laughs> I was working on a novel for a while that had 12. That was maybe too many. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, Lena, what did you write? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, uh, some um, students have to ask the trees to give them a new pencil. But if you are someone who loses your pencil, the trees will get mad at you after a while. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> um, for me, I started out with like my own to-do list. So it starts out with like sending emails. <laughs> I hope my characters don't have to deal with that. Maybe they do. But then I got, like got into like, um, like you read to the stuffed animals before you take them to like take kids mm -hmm. to bed. Or and then you have to fight off the nightmare demons so like the kids are safe before it <laughs> have a nice sleep oh my gosh I love that <laughs> okay I have uh most people prefer taking an entire day trip to the mortal lands grocery stores because it's awkward to buy food that talks back <laughs> um, okay I have three main cool. characters but they're also all the same character I need to know more <laughs> I love this from um, Penumbra Mine Warren that says, I have a character who everyone else cooks for because she can burn boiling water. I wish I was <laughs> kidding, but she has destroyed 11 kitchens trying to cook. How expensive is that to replace 11 kitchens? <laughs> My main character is a droid, and I think he has to recharge. That's important. Uh, that adds important detail I would have never thought of. <laughs> I know. I just saw that one from Cypress, too. <laughs> oh, I like Natalie's. That's like my MC basically spends time yelling at her magic guild members for destroying the base, checking for magic requests, and having breakfast. I love the order that's in. Like, you have to, like, make sure your <laughs> members don't, like, destroy the place before you can even eat. <laughs> That, that's really great. That makes me think of um, uh, what's the 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 like Divergent series or something when they're just like <laughs> running around doing their combat training the whole time. I'm like, yeah, what is the cafeteria like? The person who's serving the cafeteria food, like, what is their life like? <laughs> That's the admin for all of the weapons upkeep there, you know. <laughs> doing an outdated crossword puzzle and being confused because they don't understand the references. <laughs> I feel like uh, that happens to me when I try to do like today's crossword puzzle. <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> on my Twitter, um, one of my friends like always posts their like crossword puzzle for the day and just like ask everyone to do it for them, which I think is a great hack. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like that crowdsourcing, uh, crowdsourcing um, crosswords. I love all these, all these <laughs> very uh, fun, like daily routines that people are coming up with for their novels. <laughs> um, yeah, I see a few people are just joining us. So if you're just, if you're just joining, um, we're, we just finished our first uh, word sprint. Um, and the, the prompts are all in the video description if you wanna, if you wanna take a look. Uh, Josie, want to transition oh. to discussion? <laughs> okay, sorry guys, y'all no. have really good things. I'm having fun right <laughs> I am also having fun, and then I was like, wait a moment, wait a moment. <laughs> <laughs> we have a topic. So easy to get distracted by all the cool things that you guys are writing in the chat. <laughs> okay, so um, I have two questions, but we'll just go with one. So, um. Speaking of our daily lives, what's y'all's writing routine? Like, do you have like a pre-writing routine? Do you have to like make sure everything's clean? You need to like find like a playlist? Do you need to, I don't know, what, what do you do to get ready to write? I sometimes do that thing with playlists where I put it on shuffle, but then I'll just keep skipping <laughs> until I get to something. Get stuck on something. <laughs> I feel... A lot of people say not to do this, but I feel like I go back and read whatever I wrote during my last writing session. So I think, first of all, if it's been a while, which it sometimes is, it helps me remember like where I'm at in the story. Um, I also have a very like basic, like kind of just run on sentences outline. And so I'll be like, oh yeah, what's supposed to happen in this chapter to make sure I'm like more or less going in the right direction. Um, but I think it also helps me get back into sort of the mind of the characters too, of like, oh yeah, this is what their voice sounds like. This is how they're feeling right now. So um, I, that's that's kind of what I do. For me, I know I can't like write in my room because I get tempted to just sleep. <laughs> so I always have to like find like a place to write. Um, lately it's just been like my living room couch, but like I like to switch chains up and I'm like, I feel like, I don't know if it's like weird or not, but like, I can't write to music <laughs> because I get distracted by it. So I have to like write in like complete silence. <laughs> Uh, I am, uh, it depends on the music for me. Like, um, I had like an instrumental playlist that was going on for a while, but then I got too used to have all the songs on that playlist. And so then I had to make completely new playlist. Uh, one person, uh, uh, lights a candle that smells like coffee house. And we have my favorite candles. Eh, this brand is actually, or it's actually discontinued. It was Glade, but it was like an old library or something like that. Um, uh, it's my favorite candle in the world. And um, when we found out it was being discontinued, we bought as many as we could. <laughs> <laughs> because it seems I'm my family might have been the only ones buying it. It's interesting. Um, Moa L says listening to a pod figure podcast because I need people talking to focus. So I feel like that's like the exact opposite of you, Josie. Ailey <laughs> uh, has notebooks everywhere, even a tiny one in their purse. So they'll pull over in their car and write an idea of one comes up. Whoa. I like seeing like all the music people um, put up like I see like lo-fi um trusty a lo-fi that saved me in college <laughs> um. my partner um teaches teaches classes to kids and has that running in the background but they're like my my spotify like recommended for you is always just lo-fi playlists 
Um, I saw Samantha said, I always stretch in the morning and meditate first, uh, which is great. I, I realized I forgot to put a link to um, our upcoming events. So I'm going to stick that in the chat because we actually have some yoga for writers events coming up um, led by uh, Brie Outside, who is a like an accredited volunteer yoga teacher who also just loves NaNoWriMo. And so we do like half an hour of yoga and then half an hour of writing and it's it's really fun. So should check that out. I see all of these things that people do when they just kind of drop everything and go to start writing when there's inspiration. And that might explain why I've never finished a NaNoWriMo because generally <laughs> like your know, inspiration will come like while I'm in the middle of working or if I'm like in the shower or something. And I'm like, no, I can't write it down now. I got to focus. And then suddenly <laughs> the idea is either gone or it doesn't spark joy anymore. <laughs> hmm. 5 a.m. Writers Club. I used to try doing that and then I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like, I'm doing it now, but like on accident, because like I used to work for like a school and so you always wake up early, but I never like broke out of it. <laughs> so I'm just waking up at like six or like five and I'm like, okay, I have nothing to do. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I feel like if I'm traveling or something, that'll happen to me for about a week. And I'll be like, I'm going to be so productive in the mornings. And then after a week, I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> I'm back to sleeping in. <laughs> I'm that way. <laughs> um, Heidi Mohammed says, I make fruit tea, put on music, stare at my minimalist Excel spreadsheet, <laughs> reread my old stuff and forget to write. <laughs> Sometimes I decide to write, open my software and get distracted and forget to write. <laughs> I feel like there's a, there's a crucial step missing there somewhere. <laughs> I like what uh, Fluke Moon said, where they uh, play music on the ukulele to get going and then start writing, which I'm like, that's actually really cool, like doing something else creative to like get the creative juices like running in general. Yeah, I love that. Aspen, I want to know what kind of tea you make um, before you like turn on your playlist and start writing. Um, I have playlists going. My problem is there are different vibes going because I function on very different vibes. So like if I shuffle any playlist I own, you might get like a rock song. You might get an acoustic song. You win it like it, it is complete and utter chaos, which um, is only how my mind works. And so it means there are no vibes there's just me <laughs> I like uh assorted adventures says I recently rearranged my office so I have better dedicated workspace for longer writing sessions which mm -hmm. is great I love that and um light b says I put headphones on but don't listen to anything and I also do that sometimes on purpose but sometimes by accident but sometimes I feel like the act of putting headphones in you're yeah. like okay I'm focusing now <laughs> like even if there's nothing playing <laughs> My favorite writing routine is opening my Google Doc to write and then getting distracted with world building. <laughs> yeah, that happens. I think we are our world building. I can't remember. So our nano prep um, 101 materials, we've had like themed weeks. Um, and one of them was a themed world building week. I think it might've been last week or this week. I honestly can't remember. <laughs> it's, it's that time <laughs> where I'm like, all right, we're going. But um yeah, speaking of writing routines, should we uh, get some writing done? Yes, let me cancel that timer. There we go. <laughs> Maybe I had that for too long going on. Um, okay, <laughs> our second sprint or prompt. Um, uh, you wrote a list in your last prompt. If you came here late, you can just start a, a start uh, a start here. I um, mean, we're going to write a scene from a character trying a domestic activity from your list or really any domestic activity you can think of. Um, how do they feel about this activity? What do they do? Um, my example from the last one, how does Captain America get groceries? Um, uh, because, yeah, I, I want to know if somebody actually does that. Let me know, please. I will read it. I, I like send it to me in in the NaNoWriMo um, participant messaging thingy because I, I want to see it. I know we have. I won't be any of your buddies. <laughs> um, this one is ten minutes. 
Okay, and starting now.
we are going into our last minute and so wrap up and uh, don't forget to put in the chat um, what ideas you came up with if you're comfortable with that. Okay. Uh, what? What? How, how'd everyone do? How was the prompt? Hmm. It, was, it was good. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm still like a little bit in in writing mode. Yes. Yeah, that was a good prompt. <laughs> It was fun. Um, I'm very happy that Michael ended up doing the Captain America prompt. <laughs> uh, what do you guys come up with? Okay, for me, I actually did end up talking about emails just because like it was so funny to have like characters who are like they're always on the field like doing like actiony things, but then you get stuck with something as mundane. As emails <laughs> at one of them um he was like sending like one email per minute it's been like 30 minutes and now his like friend is like judging him for that because i'm he's like um i don't think those are good emails <laughs> you have to put actual effort into these emails but i am magical <laughs> Took it, I took it in a little bit of a different direction. So they're not like necessarily doing something mundane, but my characters have to like find the entrance to the fairy world or whatever. Um, and it turns out to be in just like this rundown, like like year round Christmas shop. <laughs> it's like <laughs> here, the, the magical portal is here. So. <laughs> um. Ooh, I have two uh, two sentences I really I really liked from mine. Um, it was it goes. Her hands trembled with rage building inside of her, and her heart was pounding. There was nothing but this mission. She would rather fight a hundred dragons or take on drama of all of her in laws than finish this freaking math equation. <laughs> um, and I just go into a detail on how final season sucks when all uh, when all of the students like have magical powers and like and nature is also magical and so like it's just trying to soothe them from the bottom up but they're busy like banging their head into the screen <laughs> very relatable <laughs> um leslie said my main character takes her basket and they're in victorian england to shop for food but first she takes some of her jewelry to be pawned so she can survive another week and keeps looking over her shoulder for the Count's men. <laughs> Intrigue. Liz also wrote, the sweet smell of pancakes coasted her to the kitchen, but alas, she must feed the spirits their daily dose of happiness. I love that, like, you need to feed the spirits before you can eat your breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I see Erica wrote my non-cooking detective attempted or attempted cooking and set off the smoke detector as her child cries from the noise. She's not used to chaos, so she's struggling right now. <laughs> I imagine so. Um, Sarah says my MC collected chestnuts to roast and I love describing the autumn smell. That is a great smell. Probably like top smells for me up there. Um, um, 
Colton said, my character realizes they need to take their sock off before washing them. The water and all the buttons on the big machine are confusing. Is this a spaceship or an aquarium? <laughs> I feel that way sometimes too. <laughs> A sort of adventure says there's an existing scene in my novel where a main character wakes up to smell of smoke and is freaked out because he knows they are being pursued by a battleship, but it turns out another character just burned dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how many of y'all's characters like cannot cook. <laughs> it's just kind of funny to see how many characters just can't cook. Uh -huh. It's also like my favorite kind of a trope is like somebody who is like the most powerful being in existence who has like uh, done all of these brutal things. It can't do something simple as like do laundry or cook. <laughs> I think there's another one from Holly and Mistletoe. <laughs> Oh, these are great. I, I, I just love reading, reading these excerpts. <laughs> <laughs> Gwyna says, is my character the only one that can cook? <laughs> Which means you have a fun, unique character. <laughs> hmm. I'm thinking of my character as if any of them can cook. Um, I do have a character who's like really competent. Um, he's like the best worker. He's like good at like knives, like throwing knives and stuff. But like, he's like scared of toasters because he doesn't like the sound they make. <laughs> I love that. I feel like I need to be scribbling notes on like future character <laughs> development. Like say whether or not they can cook, like give them a fear of something very mundane. <laughs> Shopping saying, just montage. <laughs> shopping montage. <laughs> there was more to it. I just said it out loud as I was finishing it because I was like, shopping montage. <laughs> uh, Tina says, prompt was great. Helped me create a moment of tension that was also funny. Excellent. <laughs> My character is a weaver of destiny and has frantic method of cleaning before he forces pull from, uh, before the forces pull her to the loom. Oh my God. Um, she treats doing the dishes like an Olympic sport. <laughs> oh, Tina. Yeah. So uh, I'm seeing some people talk about like trying to post excerpts um, from what they wrote um, and the YouTube chat. Unfortunately, you can only go up to 200 characters. <laughs> Um, they only allow chat comments of 200 characters long. So if you have something longer than that, you have to shorten it or break it up, which can get kind of annoying, but um, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious, I, I know Josie, you had a question about what, what people oh. like to write or don't <laughs> like to write. Oh yeah. I did want to ask y'all real fast. Um, what's a genre you, you just like writing? And why? Um, I did say like, don't just say nonfiction because you don't write school. You don't want to write like essays for like, school or reminded of school. Cause I'll also personally defend nonfiction because I think it's, <laughs> I love nonfiction. <laughs> what, what kind of nonfiction? Um, I think like, I mean, most of the time these days it's just like personal essays just cause I think I like seeing how people view like the world but I'm also like one of those people who like really likes academic <laughs> papers just because I think I like seeing how they like break things down and like analyzing it. <laughs> Alexandra sci-fi. Gwyneth does not write contemporary. <laughs> I don't think I can write contemporary either. I need a fantasy world. 
I could do sci-fi. I used to do sci-fi. I don't think I could do sci-fi anymore. <laughs> I never intentionally write sci-fi, but sometimes it just kind of ends up that way. Yeah, I don't think I can do like hard sci-fi, like the really like out of the world stuff, but I do have a lot of sci-fi elements, I think. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I see some I horror Judy. is a common one. <laughs> yeah, I see Judy said like um, they would just scare themselves. Um, I feel like that's why I can't write horror because first off, it's a lot of descriptive writing and I feel like it's one of my weaker like writing skills, but also like I come up with something scary and I'm like, oh, readers will be scared of this too. And then I just scare myself. <laughs> Ooh, somebody said, why didn't you put up a poll? I didn't even know you could do that. There's polls? <laughs> There's polls on YouTube. Now. Oh, Come on, YouTube. I think it might be too late for this one, but that's good to know for the future. <laughs> All right, that down. YouTube polls. Learn about those. <laughs> Yay. Oh, cool. We have, a, we have like 13 more minutes in the live stream, and I want to make sure that we get our last writing prompt in as well. Um, so should we head on to the the last prompt? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so uh, now uh, put a minor, or you could do a major, but uh, <laughs> some sort of obstacle in the way of your character completing their mundane chore. Like, does it start pouring rain? Does the power go out? Or and how do your characters handle that? Um, I will give like. 10 minutes. Yeah, we can do 10 minutes for this one. Okay. Camera's on. All right. That's right.
I got so invested, I missed the minute mark. Um, and so the alarm went off and it scared me and I physically jumped. <laughs> Great. <clears throat> I love it when that happens. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we're wrapping up. What did everyone come up with? How was this prompt? Hmm. That was really my fun. favorite character. Uh, my character's favorite mugs are clean, but spots a favorite bowl and would rather drink co coffee out of that than something boring. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I saw the um, BB in the chat, and a few other people were talking about um, the character losing her voice and resorting to American Sign Language um, that none of her students know, so she has to teach them as she goes along. Um, and I, I love that as a as a impediment to get over and like communicating with people. That having that is really wonderful. I'm also really enjoying the continuing adventures of Captain America. <laughs> it's from from Michael Chen in the uh, in the chat. <laughs> I want to know so much more about a lot of these stories. <laughs> Luann Blocker got 700 words today. That's oh, awesome. congrats. Wow. <laughs> I had, um, uh, I had my character like in the middle of finals um, and her best friend is demanding attention, except uh, except the caveat is that her best friend is the princess. And so I was like, don't you have a kingdom to run? The kingdom can wait for you to snuggle me. <laughs> <laughs> for mine, the Wi-Fi went out. And so they went to like investigate um, what happened. And it turns out uh giant praying mantis got escaped from the labs and now they're like okay this is more fun let's deal with this <laughs> That's awesome. holly and mistletoe said two people have a tug of war over the last box of butter in the store and a massive food fight ensues <laughs> <laughs> these are so great yay and seeing people saying that they got a bunch of words down today, which is awesome. Um, and a few few new people saying that they really enjoyed it. So I'm really glad about that. Um, but yeah, I think we're, we're about at, our, at the end of our time here. One minute over actually, but that's <laughs> right. we're just having so much fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, so we'll, we'll sign off here pretty soon, but we'll be doing this. Um, there's no virtual write-in next week, um, but I believe there is, there are some it's other fun. events that are happening. Um, but yeah, the week after that, we'll be doing these weekly, same time, same place, <laughs> I'm, you know, our YouTube channel, uh, <laughs> through, through the end of November. Um, so yeah, if you're not already, make sure to uh, click the little the little bell um, and subscribe to our page so you can get notifications when we're doing new events. Um, yeah. Did I miss anything? Anything else? Um, I think um, that's it. I'm just reiterating things from the beginning. Um, uh, if whether or not you donated, um, I and are getting a physical postcard, you can still get, uh, download the printable version um, that is available in your emails now, I believe. Um, uh, and uh, you will be able to participate in the postcard writing party that we are hosting not next week, but the week after, on um, Tuesday, October 25th. Um, all of these um, events will be in your, available in NaNoWriMo HQ and will be continued to be updated. Um, and, uh, Thank you for this. Um, I think I think that was the main one. Um, 
if you want to uh, involved in any plat uh, any platform and prepare to write, um, not only do we have Nano Prep One One going on right now, um, but we also have a whole bunch of our sponsors um, giving a whole bunch of like free trials and discounts going on. Um, Scrivener starts on Saturday, and I know that's um, one of the semi popular ones. And so I uh, and that um, just so you know, if you want that one, that that's when it starts, and I think it ends in December. Um, and um, yeah, so Scrivener um, uh, postcard writing party. Um, we have um, like LGBT um, uh, virtual write-in um, next week that will um, be in around this day um, or on this day um, next week. Um, and then the following week and all the weeks after, then you'll see Josie and I's faces all the time. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for joining everybody. And we will see you later. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.